Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Tuesday, November 14th at 9.20 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Bringing you a grand solar minimum update. You're looking at the USGS current seismic map. And what we uh, have noticed today is a unique uptick in moderate mid-ocean ridge earthquakes here at the Triple Junction in the Indian Ocean. Down here in the Sandwich Islands of 5.3, up in the Norwegian Sea, uh, and then a lot of activity in the Fiji, New Caledonia area. Nothing significant, just moderate, as if the Earth is expanding at the mid ocean ridges. Now, here, this is the earthquake from yesterday near Gonzales. There was some larger aftershocks just recently, a 3.8. It's a few hours ago. So, the aftershocks moved north up to San Andreas, and now they're moving back south on this particular active area. There have been a lot of aftershocks, so let's go. I'll show you them. Whoa! Take a look. So, if you remember yesterday in our update, the live earthquakes were up here to the north. Now they're moving back to the south, and we've just had a larger 3.8 aftershock. This is a very active area. Heads up. Moving on with the update. Severe storm, large tornado hits Turkey, leaving extensive damage and 25 injured. Deadly windstorm hits Washington and British Columbia, knocking out power to 180,000. A strong low pressure system swept through western Washington and B.C. on Monday, killing one, seriously injuring others. The most powerful storm to hit the region this year. Look at these wind gusts from 80 on down. A lot of near 60 or higher gusts. A lot of destruction. So heads up, this is because of the atmospheric river that I reported on yesterday coming in on the west coast. Drought in Somalia kills up to 75% of livestock, pre-famine alert issued. This is terrible news. Severe drought is having a devastating impact on people in the Horn of Africa. <clears throat> Three quarters of a million people have been newly displaced. Look at this guy. But now I'm only left with 73 goats. Some of them are just here starving to death. It's only going to get worse. Tornadoes hit Sicily, Italy, destroying greenhouse crops. Heavy rains and tornadoes hit Sicily, Italy on November 10th and 11th, destroying local greenhouse crops. In addition, some of the farmers had to deal with flooded crops. Severe weather warnings are still in effect for the region. Late autumn is a major tor tornado season in southern Italy. Look at that. Total loss. I'll leave you links to all this. I reported on a fireball yesterday. How about a sonic boom heard and felt across all of North of Alabama, still, still unexplained. A sonic boom was heard and felt shortly after 1340 Central Time on the 14th today. There is no explanation. We did report on a fireball over Pennsylvania-New York uh, border yesterday. And there was a huge fireball over Western Germany. They do suggest in this article it could have been a sonic boom from a meteorite from the Leonids because we've been seeing some nice green plasmoid meteorites over here where I live, <clears throat> and that could probably be it. Huge fireball over western Germany, 295 reports within several hours. A huge fireball has been observed streaking across the sky over western Germany, November 14th. The event lasted 7 to 20 seconds according to eyewitnesses. There's the maps. Clearly there's no video, just this fireball here, boom. Boom. Let's talk about snow. Snow pounding the Pacific Northwest. Yesterday I shared with you how high above average the snowpack is in all of those areas. Between 150 and 250% above average. 
Those are the facts. Let's talk about the depths. Big Sky has received 76 inches so far this preseason. Cruiser putting final touches on the mountain. 89 inches of white gold, which is nearly 25% of their annual average. They're not even open at Jackson Hole. That is a record, record snow. To the west, in the Tetons, Grand Tarhe has scooped up 97 inches at the summit. This is amazing. Mount Hood in Oregon with a whopping tally of 143 inches and counting. Strap on your snowboard. The most recent winter storm came ashore Monday with gusts of 80 miles per hour. We just reported on that, the Vancouver, B.C. storm. Crystal Mountain, Washington, the strong wings knocked out power to 150,000 customers in Seattle. A winter storm warning is in effect with up to three feet of snow expected by tomorrow night in parts of the Cascades. Boom. Grand solar minimum, much. Guys, this is a repetitive pattern. It's the 14th. We're exactly five weeks away from winter. If we have three foot of snow every week for five weeks, that's 15 foot of snow in the Cascades before winter. Look at these pictures. Amazing. Look at Big Sky. Jesus. They're buried. That looks like December. Atmospheric River brings storm and flash flood warnings to fire ravaged wine country, so it may be snowing epically up in the Sierras to the depth of three feet. But down low, it's pouring. Wednesday to Thursday, the National Weather Service issued flash flood warnings for Sonoma and Napa. Look out. Scorched, scorched earth is going to flood. It is going to be a muddy cluster. Yep. I didn't curse. I held back. Rain could fall late in a rate about one half inch an hour, heavy enough to trigger flash floods, according to the National Weather Service, and worse. They don't know. It's all burned up there. Altus, Tubbs, Nuns, Pocket Burn Scars, as well as the Fountain Grove neighborhood in northeast Santa Rosa. We're talking right here, three to five inches of rain in the coastal mountains, less in the Central Valley, while also bringing 50 mile an hour gusts. The storm will move south and is forecast to drop 11 inches of snow across the Central Sierras, with some areas accumulating up to 34 inches. Boom! That's a lot. That's a, that's a good igloo. What is an atmospheric river? What's going on? Is this normal? Do you guys think this is normal? Look at this. This is amazing. Look at that. Did God make that? Thank you, Jesus. In what is being called the Big Dark by some, the 5,000-mile-long atmospheric river is a band of water vapor expected to drop a lot of rain and snow on the northwest in the next few days. They're called atmospheric rivers, guys. I have some data here. Let's do the science. Okay, that's the actual one coming. Let's get back to that. Where did that go? So here's the atmospheric river that's actually coming and bringing this moisture here to this area. Now, let's go big. An atmospheric river is simply a flowing column of condensed water vapor in the atmosphere responsible for producing significant levels of rain and snow, especially in the western United States. When atmospheric rivers move inland and sweep over the mountains, the water vapor rises, cools, creates heavy precipitation through condensation. Boom. Same thing happens here at the Continental Divide where I live, which is why the ski resort near me gets the most snow in Colorado because all the precipitation is condensated out, precipitated out, and then dropped before it rolls over here, the mountain. So that's what it is. And the Pineapple Express is a type of atmospheric river that goes all the way out here to Hawaii, hence the name. So that's just it. It's just a simple weather phenomenon that happens. It's not abnormal, or is it? Here's the distribution of landfalling atmospheric rivers on the U.S. West Coast from October 16th to March 2017. Not even a year. Boom. That is 20, 30, 40, almost 50 atmospheric rivers. 
with 15 strong to extreme. That's why there was records last year. That's why the drought ended in one storm. And it's only going to get worse because the cosmic ray flux is going to cause increased cloud nucleation. And these atmospheric rivers are going to get bigger and stronger and longer and more numerous, which we already have the proof of. 45 atmospheric rivers have made landfall on the West Coast in less than a year. This is much greater than normal. And one third of them have been stronger extreme. So that number is going to increase. This total number is going to increase. And we are going to be skiing our asses off. Amen. So it's a heads up, you guys, on the West Coast. What I want to do is real quick show you this animation that's quite nice. This is the entire snowfall of the season and how it's progressed. Boom, 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 boom. Watch the dates. 16th. Stop. Let's go forward. October 15th, 19th, October 30th, November 7th, November 9th, November 13th. Here we are. So that's the snow cover and the entire North Canadian shield is now reflecting the sunlight back into space every day. The albedo effect is at maximum potential and it just happened in the last week. So it really only started to increase here as far as albedo right around here. October 27th, we started cooling a little earlier than normal. And then by the 1st of November, the entire Canadian Shield was covered. Seven weeks before winter. It's going to be a cold snowy winter and a white winter in many places let's talk about how climate change could lead to more wars in the 21st century this grand solar minimum is going to lead to famine and food shortage which is exactly what this book is saying the shortages of water and food that will come of it so the 20 20th century wars were fought over oil and economics but the 21st century wars will be fought over something quite different, and that is climate change in the form of rapid cooling. Let's talk about rapid cooling. Artificially cooling Earth with volcanic eruptions is dangerous. Uh, well, yeah, we can just use history and learn from it, as most do not. And the Tambora eruption... In the early 1800s, caused the earth to cool over one degree almost instantly, causing a year without a summer, crop losses. I'll leave you links to this article. A controversial plan to cool down the planet by artificially simulating volcanic eruptions could have disastrous consequences for earth. You think? Yet there are no laws or regulations to stop any country or private company from deploying such technology. Now, guys, geoengineering has been being deployed without it being reported for decades. Now, right in our local area here, our local government pays $4,000 a year to the local cloud seeding project. So we have planes that fly over here to, that cloud seed because according to their scientists, it brings more money to the ski resort because it can provide up to 5 to 30% more snow, which is total nonsense. There's no way to tell that. So it's crazy because the way that climate cycles work, you can all of a sudden have a season that has record snow. The last... Solar minimum we had in 2009, the Sierras had record snow. And now we're in the next solar minimum of cycle 24. So the next three years, we're going to have record snow. It's based on the sun. Man has nothing to do with it. But geoengineering is dangerous and stupid. It's a waste of money. They should be feeding poor people and building greenhouses. You can't artificially re reduce global temperature. I mean, I had graduate level thermodynamics and I got an A 
a 4.0. If we were to burn everything that's flammable on the surface of the earth and light off every nuclear bomb, we would melt all the ice. But it would only last for three years and the earth would be right back to where it was. And we would have nothing left to burn. That's the thermodynamic truth about how ridiculous all this nonsense is. Man has no control over anything. He's a pathetic egomaniac. And we're soon about to get a readjustment, thankfully. Hopefully they won't set off Yos <laughs> Yosemite. But another devastating consequence of deploying solar geoengineering in the Northern Hemisphere is drought. Because if you steal water vapor from one place, you're, to put it somewhere else, you're killing people. There's already a history in this empire model of killing hundreds of millions of people. It's disgusting. If they start altering the climate, I mean, think about it. They're going to use Yellowstone. They're going to diffuse Yellowstone. Think about the egomaniacs that are thinking that they could potentially do that. It's crazy. Hopefully there will be wars soon. Hopefully there will be a grid failure soon so that we can start the new earth, so that we can start in a local level, working together collectively, harmoniously in abundance. The grand solar minimum is upon us. The albedo effect has just kicked in high gear the last two weeks. The temperature is going to quickly cool for the next three years. It's the, the crop failures have begun. It's going to get worse. Any questions, leave it in the comments. Share this video with like-minded people. Support our Patreon page. With our, at our team level or higher, you're going to get access to all of our geothermal greenhouse plans. These are rigid greenhouses that use small solar systems to heat the ground so you can grow and live in abundance. 12 months of the year, anywhere in the world. Even if it's covered in a blue blanket. Be safe, everyone.